we are going to look at the section that covers uh, current assets. Okay, <clears throat> so the formal definition of a current asset is an asset that the company expects to change to cash or to use up within one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. Here's something for you in the class. You don't need to worry about the operating cycle. Everything is going to be based on uh, the dates, the years, the dates is what we're going to be looking at. So, but the operating cycle is like, it can be different from company to company. It's the average time that it takes a company to buy their inventory uh, and to sell those goods and then to get payment from their customers. Okay. But we're not going to be looking at operating cycle. We're only going to be looking at um, within one year. So current assets are assets that the company is going to use up or convert to cash within one year. Okay. Common types are the, what we looked at in the list cash, short-term investments, or debt investments, um, receivables, uh, inventories, and prepaid expenses, okay? All right, the next um, section, or the next slide, just kind of shows us the current asset section. They're just showing us a current asset section for a company. Um, this is for Southwest. And just so you know, too, that all of these uh, financial statements in the book that they're showing you are actual financials from these companies. So this is actually millions for, for this company. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Um, oh, um, you can put the answer in the chat. Cash and other resources that are reasonably expected to be realized in cash or sold or consumed in the business within one year or the operating cycle are called current assets. Yes, current assets. Okay. All right. <clears throat> long-term investments. So long-term investments are things that we are going to be holding for longer than a calendar year okay so these are things that we'll have for longer than a year so if you if you have a problem and in your problem it tells you it's january 22 and then you see that it tells you that the investment is going to mature in january 2025 that's going to be a long-term investment that's not going to be short term because it's going to be longer than one year um, some of them problems will actually say short term investment, long term investment, but some of them you'll have to look at the date. So investments in stocks and bonds of other corporations that are held for more than one year. Long term assets such as land or buildings that the company is not currently using in its operations. So, for instance, like for Los Madonna's uh, before the Brentwood campus was actually functioning, that building was a long-term asset, a long-term asset where if they decided to sell it, they could have sold it and not opened the campus. So it's something that they could turn to value, but they weren't using it in business yet, okay? And then we can have long-term notes receivable. So that would be a notes receivable that's going to be paid back in longer than a year, okay? We're going to get our money in, it's going to take longer than one year to get our money. Okay. All right. Um, the next section is the PPE, the property, the plant, and the equipment. So these are things that have long useful lives. So they're going to be around for a while. So these are things like, you know, bakery ovens for bakeries or delivery trucks for UPS or um, uh, buildings like Los Madonna's, the college campus buildings, um, things that are going to be around for a long time. So land, buildings, equipment, delivery vehicles, furniture. Uh, this is where we depreciate them um, over the life of the asset, which is estimated uh, when we buy the asset. You will not have to calculate the estimation of the life. Those were things that we'll be giving to you in the problems, and we don't get to that until like chapter six, eight, something like that. So we've got a while. Okay. And then accumulated depreciation is the total of depreciation that has been expensed since the asset was was purchased. All right, so this is just showing you kind of the PPE section. I wouldn't look at this as an example because this has stuff in there that we don't deal with, like these uh, molds and cores and rings. You, you're not really going to get one like this. It's going to be more like that example I asked you to look at in the book on page two, four. Okay. All right intangible assets so 
Intangible assets are things that they have no physical substance. So you cannot hold them in, their, in your hands. So you can kind of think about it this way. If you were to go out and buy a pair of uh, Nike tennis shoes with the swish on them, right? They'd be what, worth what? $200, $250, $150, right? A nice pair of Nike swoosh tennis shoes, right? Now, if you had the same pair of tennis shoes and there was no Nike swoosh on there, there was no identifier that those shoes were Nikes, how much would you pay for the same pair of shoes? Well, you might be able to get them for 40 bucks, right? Because there's nothing saying that they're Nike, so they could be counterfeit, right? So the swoosh, the Nike swoosh is a trademark. It is a trademark and it is a um, it is a asset for the company because it helps the company to create revenue, to create money. So let's say you were going to go buy Nike company and you went to buy Nike and you looked on their financial statements and they did not have the swoosh listed as an intangible asset. You would basically be buying a company and not buying the rights to use that swoosh. So you have to be really careful with intangible assets. So these are things that do not have substance, but they're things that are very important to the success of a company. So trademarks and trade names, think about things like the Nike Swish, think about the Apple logo, think about Disneyland and all the Disneyland characters. Um, copyrights, so copyrights are um, for things like music. If musicians write a song, it protects, it protects people from selling their music without them getting royalties for it. Um, books, uh, movies, things of that nature. Uh, patents are things that are the right to produce a certain product for a certain amount of time. And the, the product has like a, a custom makeup of it. Like for instance, I use a trackball versus a, a mouse. So I use a trackball on my computer. It's made by Logitech. And if you go out there and do research on trackballs, there's really not a lot of them out there because I believe that um, uh, Logitech has a patent on a lot of the technology around trackballs. Um, goodwill is um, a number that's calculated. <clears throat> it's a pretty difficult thing to get into. We don't get into it in this class, but, but kind of the way you can say goodwill is, is a company's intent to continue to operate in a favorable way for its clients. Um, and stockholders um, for the coming future. So these are all items that would be listed under the intangible asset area. <clears throat> now you're not going to see like the titles that they have here on the page, like characters and things like that. You're going to see more things like goodwill, patents, copyrights, trademarks, trade names. Those are the kinds of accounts that you're going to see. All right, so patents and copyrights are intangible assets intangible assets okay all right so I'm gonna... 